Today on CityCast Portland, we're talking with Oregonian reporter Lizzie Acker about her recent article titled, Apparently Portland is the best place in America to live if you're Gen Z. But what about millennials? Now, uh, that story, coupled with another piece that the Willamette Week published earlier this month, reporting middle-aged folks were fleeing Portland, made me wonder, wait, is there something deeper here? And because representation matters, we also asked an actual Gen Zer to help us get to the bottom of this. Someone who has never seen a rotary telephone in real life, our audio producer, Julia Fiaioni. It's Wednesday, February 22nd, 2023. I'm Claudia Meza, and this is what Portland's talking about. Why would anyone say that Portland is the best city in the U.S. for Gen Z? Also, what is a Gen Z? <laughs> what is and a Julia Gen Z? Julia hates that I say a Gen Z, but I'm doing this <laughs> just specifically to annoy Julia. She's you know like, what? it's Gen z It's working. Well, I should say, I did not come up with this. This was a Great. company called Living Cozy. <laughs> that said that Portland is the number one place. But they said it was because of this access to mental health care and physicians. I would say maybe the mental health care, though, I, as what I know about Gen Z, they're all on the internet. So that was it? No, that was also because of the state of Oregon has the largest LBGTQ plus community. Portland is perfect if you love green spaces. So apparently Gen Z likes those two things as well. Julia, does that ring true? Are you here because you need mental health services and you're gay? <laughs> <laughs> probably. That's probably what it boils down to. But that doesn't sound completely off base. I don't know about physicians specifically. That that seems like a boomer thing. But when I think back to why I moved here, I was I was living in Toronto at the time, and uh, Toronto's not a very affordable city. And I thought Portland was at least more affordable. So that was kind of the draw initially. And then when I had got here, I had realized how much I had appreciated the green space, that I felt very accepted being who I am as a queer woman, and it became a much easier environment to live in. So those things are true. I don't know if mm -hmm. that was something I learned once I got here, and I've grown to be more comfortable because of it. Mm -hmm. So maybe it is a Gen Z city. I mean, I think it's a young people city. I mean, not okay. like necessarily just a young people city. It's a city you move to. I mean, I am from Oregon, I will say, but, and I lived in San Francisco for my 20s. I came back here because it is an easier place to live. It's more affordable in San Francisco. If you want to like live in a vibrant place with things happening, but you also want to save the teeniest amount of money or like live in a place without 18 roommates or something, uh, mm -hmm. it's a place you can live, you know? Oregon is a great state in terms of, I don't know, bodily autonomy. I'll leave it at that. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so are you saying that it's better to be younger in Portland right now than it is to be older? No, I think it's good to be older in Portland, too. I think it's actually. <laughs> I just turned 40 recently, so I feel like pretty old. I'm like an, an old millennial, you know, and I have a, a kid. And I could not imagine having a kid in San Francisco. That's actually one of the reasons I moved here, moved back. Yeah, there's a, there was an article written on the other side of the topic uh came out of Willamette Week from Anthony Effinger. He wrote that Gen Xers and older millennials are bailing Portland in record numbers. And he actually had numbers, like he had like stats oh, okay. rather than a reference to. <laughs> <laughs> wow, Willamette Week has stats. Sorry, I used to write for Willamette Week. I'd like to keep that beef going, you know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you got stats, Willamette Week? Yeah, ooh, um, I've got feelings. <laughs> Lizzie's got living cozy. Right. <laughs> I'm also an older millennial. You're mm -hmm. you're claiming that as well. And you're just like, this is a great place. But people are leaving, you know. Uh, well, I don't know. I mean, I think I would have to look at those stats. <laughs> I, I, <laughs> I'm, I'm sure people are leaving. I think you get to a certain age and you're like, you want things to be easier. Or mm -hmm. you become more conservative. Maybe you want to own a house. And it is expensive to live here. Mm -hmm. Or maybe you want to have a kid and you also want to, like, eat every month. <laughs> you mm -hmm. know, like, Just once a month, like a snake. Just like one meal a month. <laughs> I mean, it is really expensive. And it's, and it's cheaper than some of the other big, you know, fancy cities. I mean, my friends who live in New York City, for example, it's always a struggle. Mm -hmm. So if you want more space, I can see it. But I also think I don't want to leave Portland because I think it's pretty fun. And it, 
I grew up in a small town also, and I love the idea that my kid will get to like ride the bus and have access to like museums and, you know, there might be other things to do than just drink in someone's cornfield or something. (laughs) (laughs) What about you, Julia? Do you think that Portland is right now perfect for the older folks or the Gen Z? I think it is easier to be a Gen Z in Portland (laughs) right now, I think. And it's a conversation about a lot of the things you mentioned, Lizzie, where it's like the comfort of stability versus like the freedom of precarity. Mm -hmm. So if you're a young person, you likely don't own a house. You likely don't even care to, you know, care about having a house or having kids. Those opportunities that may have been, have died for us. It feels that way. Like everything's going to burn. Everything's going to crap. Mm -hmm. Let's just move on and, and make do with what we have. So if you are a renter, and you don't necessarily like the area of Portland you're in, you have the freedom to just go rent somewhere else. And your your rent's going to raise anyway, so you might as well move at the end of your lease. So it becomes easier that way. There's a little bit more freedom. I think that is like also an age thing versus a generation thing, because I think Mm -hmm. like I had a kid when I was 37 and I bought a house when I was like 35. So I feel like before that, I was always like, I'm never going to buy a house. Doubt I'm going to get married. You know, like the world is burning. Everything is like might as well just you know, just live in the moment. And then maybe not to be too hopeful, but (laughs) because the world is burning, don't get me wrong. But I think maybe you get to a certain point, you're like, well, I am still here. Um, It hasn't Mm -hmm. burned. I do exist. And in a lot of ways, the world has gotten better. Mm -hmm. I don't know. So, and then I had a kid. So now I like, it has to get better. (laughs) There's no option. (laughs) Yeah. I personally feel like Portland has always been a city for, you know, the quote unquote Gen Z, but not so much like specifically Gen Z, but young people. And right. it's been like that in the making for like 20 years. Yeah. Uh, like we've been canceling people in Portland decades before Gen Z even came up with that word. You know, we've been <laughs> we've been self-policing how we say things and mm-hmm. trying to be very sensitive to people's feelings and just things that maybe, you know, previous generations didn't really care about or just thought were, was funny to right. poke at, you oh. know? And I feel like Lizzie, our generation, really, like, <laughs> started changing the, that yeah, language. Totally. And now everyone in Gen Z thinks they're being bullied. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> All right. You know, like, I used to – my cousins who are older than me, they lived in Portland when I was, like, a kid. Before there was even millennials, even was a word, you know? Pre-9-11. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, my God. I'm sorry. Oh. sorry. No, you don't funny. understand. Julia, can you just give your note right now? Because we, we, when we were talking about this, I was like, so what do you know about millennials? And and Julie, what, what do you know about millennials? <laughs> talking about getting canceled, this is going to get me canceled. Oh, good. I'm ready to cancel you. <laughs> Hold on. No, get kidding. ready. So here we go. I think generally... Gen Z doesn't care at all about 9-11, almost in like a joking way. And mm-hmm. millennials will use it as a part of their personality. And, and I wouldn't like, say personality. I would say <laughs> demarcation of time. Right. Yeah. There I was mean, a it pre was a and post. F-y we were conscious. Thing. We saw the TV. We saw the awfulness. Mm-hmm. And there was like a shift of consciousness. Not that any other generation before us didn't also experience that. But we were very, we were like at the young, impressionable age. We like, were very I impressionable. It, I remember for a mm-hmm. week, I couldn't really do much. Like, I was just like, oh, my God. Like, that can, I would dream about it. Like, I was just like, mm-hmm. oh, my God, that, that can just happen. But I get what Jean is saying. I have never even seen, I grew up without a TV and I was like a couple weeks between my, se- I was, finished my senior year. See, this is it. This is the millennial thing. I'm going to tell you where I was on 9-11. You're t- tell me your story. <laughs> what were you exactly. eating? I was in Corvallis, Oregon. Yeah. I mean, I was completely on the other side of the country. And you have to also oh, know that this sorry, was- Sorry. I just hate that we just walked right in that one. We did. We walked but you right know what? in. I want to hear Lizzie's story. <laughs> I was 18 years old. The next day, I tried to organize a peace rally in my town because I was like, this is it. You know, we're going to go to war. Mm-hmm. And everything is going to change. And everything did. I mean, people my age were signing up for the military or even worse, had already signed up because it was like, this is the way to get to college. We're not ever going to be at war. And then suddenly they were in war. (laughs) And Mm -hmm. that did affect everybody. I mean, the whole thing affected everybody. And it is a joke, too. It is a joke we make as a joke. We say because (laughs) 9-11 a lot. 
as a yeah, there you go. <laughs> I mean, my daughter is was five months old when the COVID pandemic started. And I have a feeling that in 20 years, you're going to be sitting on some virtual reality podcast. And there's going to be some young person being like, why do you guys always talk about COVID? And then I'm going to have my COVID story yeah, for like, sure. Well, I can't even <laughs> say they shut it all down. Yeah, I hear it. I, I can see that. Okay, let's take a break here. When we return, I would love it if you two swapped advice, like some millennial wisdom for Gen Z and and vice versa. Lizzie, you write an advice column. Could you guys maybe give each other advice from your generational vantage points? Julia, I feel like we've been dominating this conversation, even though it's kind of about you. (laughs) Classic us. Classic millennial. Uh, Julia, what would be your advice to to Lizzie? Me too. I'll listen. I'll listen. (laughs) I'll get right into this with some low-hanging fruit. I'm surprised no one's brought this up yet, but the whole skinny jeans conversation. Oh, my God. Oh my God. We I have am not wearing skinny it. jeans. I just want to. I don't believe it. <laughs> Camera back on. Oh. Look at, these are the baggiest jeans. I haven't worn these baggy jeans since middle school. Uh, let's, okay, thank let's you. Just let her, let's just let her get okay, through. Fine, fine. You know she worked on this all night. Go on, okay. Julia. <laughs> yeah, and just style in general. I feel like oh a God. lot of millennials dress like your early 2000s fourth grade elementary school teacher that's showing up just a little bit hungover from last night. You know who I'm talking about. <laughs> that's that's a millennial style right there. Just picture it for a second. <laughs> I don't know any of those because in the early 2000s, I was in college. <laughs> <laughs> well, there you go. <laughs> I was hungover, not a little bit. <laughs> yeah. Was there? Is there more, Julia? There's more. So, oh. um, <laughs> Okay, go on. On a more I, Lizzie's walking away right now. No, you come back here, Lizzie. <laughs> just two more things. So another point on uh, just like general aesthetic. I feel like millennials, for some reason, tie a part of their personality to a corporate brand like Disney adults, people who are obsessed with Harry Potter. That's a very millennial thing. While Gen Z will tie their personality or their aesthetic to a vibe so like I'm feeling very like sad girl fall right now like things like that I don't know which one's better but I feel like you can learn a little bit from us just to move away from the corporate (laughs) nonsense and then the last thing this one's more sincere be more unapologetic for advocating your for yourself and in the workplace I feel like millennials will quietly quit while Gen Z will just straight up not show up to prove a point about how things aren't good in the workplace. And I feel like there's something to learn about that and that pushback. There's something important there, but (laughs) that's all. That's all. Okay. Okay. That's all. I feel like I need like a little bell, like, like, you know, like, bing. Well, ding, ding, ding. (laughs) First of all, no. um, But I think those, those are interesting and I think we can always learn from each other. And you know what? I understand what you're saying, but, you know, a lot of us kind of, came into the workforce around 2008, which was a massive recession. I got my first Mm -hmm. really real professional job because a bunch of people got laid off and I was hired as a temp. And Mm -hmm. so starting off your career in that way means that we've been getting paid less. We've been expecting less and we've been getting laid off a lot in our, in our lives. So we are, uh, I would say a little more deferential Mm -hmm. to people in charge because we want to maintain our jobs. And um, so my advice coming from that perspective for Gen Zers is um, to, to learn how to take criticism in a positive way. <laughs> Claudia, uh, your face. <laughs> <laughs> What's going through your head right now, Claudia? <laughs> no, no, I just I'm having a great time. And I'm just so glad I'm not I'm not in this. So go on, Lizzie. Keep going. I'm just saying, You're in this. I just I just sort of coined this and I think I've been making sure that feedback is not an attack. Okay. Mm-hmm. Feedback <laughs> is how we grow. <laughs> and um I think that that is my main piece of advice for Gen Z. Also, I've seen thongs coming back in. Oh no. And I just want to say <sighs> that a lot oh, of us, no. a lot of us went through a lot of horrible fashion we are we are trying to help you okay we don't want you to have to deal with what we dealt with which was horrible 
low cut pants that you couldn't even sit down in, but your butt was hanging <laughs> out and thongs that like make you bleed. I mean, geez, oh Louise. Oh my God. Let's just, <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm just saying like, we've been through it and we don't need to go through it again. In the spirit of bringing back trends that maybe shouldn't, Julia, so the reason why, skin, for one, I just want you to know the millennials did not invent skinny jeans. Skinny jeans have been in, you know, the the fashion lexicon for like ever. Mm-hmm. I think what we, the reason we really clinged on to them was uh, one, that's all, the, literally the only pair of pants you could buy forever if you like didn't want to spend hundreds of dollars on, on pants. And, but also two, it was in reaction to like, elementary, you know, middle school obsession of wearing baggy clothes. And I feel like that's coming back. And I think Mm -hmm. what happened was once we saw ourselves in something that wasn't shapeless, we're just like, look at us go. We may not be able to get a job, (laughs) but look at that butt, you know? Yeah, exactly. But I also, you know what? I'm wearing baggy jeans right now and they're comfortable. (laughs) High-waisted baggy jeans. (laughs) Yeah. That's the one thing I'm really into. I do appreciate a high waist. But here's the deal. I love the like, you know, non-genderizing fashion, but now everyone looks like a, like a divorced dad, like hoping you'll go mini golfing with him. (laughs) Those sunglasses. And they're really young. Yeah, yeah. And they're just, yeah. They'll just come through and they're just like, uh, and you're, you know, like, oh, you know, we're we're still we're still a family, you know. That's what I see. <laughs> I see a Gen Z. Do you want some ice cream? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so who's who's your mom? Uh, who's your mom hanging out with? <laughs> oh my god! Just keep going. So I don't know, Julie. <laughs> my piece of advice to you: literally, what are you wearing right now? Come on, <laughs> don't. What don't even wearing? mention it. Just don't You're mention it. You're literally wearing two <laughs> sweaters on top. You're wearing a hoodie with a sweater on top of that hoodie and a baseball cap. And a baseball cap. cap. <laughs> <laughs> this is the thing that makes me mad. Is she looks so adorable. Yeah, very She looks so good because she's young. Stop. She looks like a... <laughs> how cute is it when, it when little kids dress up like adults? It's adorable. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Man, so her hat is so cool. No, I you mean, started it, Julia. Just, we were playing I nice. I started it. Good. I'm, I'm glad. I'm saying you, you should own it. Mm. Just be like, look, I look great. I feel great. This is the youngest I'm ever going to be. I feel like this has turned into an advice for Julia <laughs> episode. Well, yeah. Well, thanks so much, Lizzie, for taking the time to walk us through your article. Julia, thank you for for sitting through all this. Uh, I'm excited for one day, you know, for Julia to write a similar article, but it's more like, thank God the millennials are leaving. Um, I'm I'm like (laughs) sincerely looking forward to that. I will Uh, read it, but I'm never going anywhere. I love it. Is that a threat? (laughs) Man, I feel like I wish I know we're all in remote location. I wish you two could hug before we left just for the audience. Like, oh, I know. I think we would be friends. I mean, I like actually love the fact that we can communicate and like talk about this stuff because I felt so Mm -hmm. isolated when I was your age from the the people that were older than me. It's funny, Lizzie. I um, I struggled to wrap my head around this like conversation of generations because um, I'm considered the resident old lady of my friend group. I'm 23 years old, but a lot of my friends who are Mm -hmm. of Gen Z always make fun of me because I don't get the references they're making or the slang. But I also have a lot of friends who are in their 30s or 40s that I connect with. So I'm confident we would be friends. I'm not (laughs) doubtful of that at all. But uh, at the end of the day, maybe this is just a bunch of corporate BS anyway. It's all about about who's young. They just want our money. And what we will give them back is our friendship with each other. All right. There we go. There we go. Welcome, <laughs> We're going to end on that. Welcome to Portland, Gen Z. Yeah. <laughs> we love it. We Stay as long as you want. And now for your microdose of news. Big changes could be coming to the Central East Side. The Portland Design Commission has approved a massive 3 million square foot development near the Oregon Museum of Science and Industry. The OMSI District Master Plan, as it's called, has been in the works for years now, and it could include up to 1,200 new apartments along with restaurants, stores, and a new waterfront park. Also, Portland scored high marks again in the Human Rights Campaign's annual survey of the country's most LGBTQ plus inclusive cities. Portland was among 118 cities that received a perfect score for 2022. 
while we did rank pretty low in the general municipal services category, we were given bonus points for providing services to LGBTQ plus youth, the transgender community, and LGBTQ plus people experiencing homelessness. For even more local news and events, sign up for our daily newsletter, Hey Portland. We'll throw a link in the show notes. All right, that's all for today here on CityCast Portland. We'll be back tomorrow morning with more news from around the city. Until then, see you at Slim's. <laughs>